Hi, my name is Brittany Bruton, and I'm doing a movie review over Dyslexia in the Movie. Um, some of my reactions I had for the movie actually really surprised me. I ended up watching the movie twice because I liked it so much, and I felt that it was such an impactful documentary that I think that I didn't get the full effect the first time. Um, other reactions I had for that were... I really love the term that the director used as learning difference instead of learning disability because it is something that you can overcome over time and I think that it's really important not to group those students in together and make them feel stupid or unimportant in that sense. Um, another thing that I felt like hit me really hard was learning about all the famous people that are dyslexic and I didn't even know um, Walt Disney, Orlando Bloom, uh, those kinds of people, movie directors, singers, songwriters. There are so many people that I feel that our students need to connect with more as influential people in their lives to look up to. And having, having those famous people to look up to and see them as a model of if they can do it, I can do it and giving that, that personal motivation to strive higher than they think. Um, one thing I really, really liked about the movie was having that deep dive into the classroom and being able to have the director's connection for himself personally, being a dyslexic, and looking in about how, how he handled it as a child, how he was taught, um, looking at how it affected him later on and how he was always pushed to do the best that he can. And I, I think that that was something that we should teach forever, for everybody, because we don't want to hold them back based on their disability or their learning difference. It also has a really big impact, dyslexia does, on their a student's learning personality. Whenever you don't have, whenever you can't read or write correctly, you tend to express yourselves in different ways whether it's being a very good speech giver and not and just being able to wing it all the time or making movies or drawing or learning with your hands that kind of thing I think that that is really important to promote in our classrooms um, one thing I plan on doing for my future classroom is task baskets that are all hands-on and they get time to do movies or create something that is personal to them they don't have to write nearly as much or type or anything like that. Um, being able to have really good class cohesion for if we do peer edits or peer review for papers or videos or anything like that. I want to be able to have my classroom feel like they are 100% together and they don't feel stupid or out of the box or different in any sort of way. I want them all to feel unique and individual for themselves and I think that having a good class cohesion and providing different ways to create things that would be best for my classroom that's personally how I learn and how I think other students will comprehend um, information better. I plan on making sure that my cl class feels welcomed and that they are all unique and they are all very very special but not to single anybody out. I feel that whenever teachers know that they have a student who is dyslexic or has a learning disability, they tend to single that child out instead of letting them learn certain ways or they have to go, they have to do this by themselves because they can't work with other people. Having them integrated within the classroom is honestly the best thing that you can do. It's kind of like with an ELL, you want to pair them with people, with other students who are proficient in ELL and they know that what the correct terms are or how to spell. You want to do the same thing with your dyslexic students also. And I think that pairing them up and having good groups for students is going to be so beneficial within my classroom. One, so they get to know other people and don't feel so singled out all the time, but to also be able to start building relationships with each other, being able to advocate for each other. If they see that one student is struggling, they can connect with them and have a completely different outlook on life. And I think that if we, as teachers, 
implement this all the time in our classroom where they are all synced up together and support and advocate for each other, let alone for themselves. I think that our students would be so much better off and be able to stand up for themselves or tell someone how they want to learn and that kind of thing. Um, another thing that I plan on using in my future classroom is choice boards. Um, I personally love choice boards and I feel like I learn better doing a choice board than I would if you were to give me a seven page paper and I have to write it all by a week or if you gave me a speech or if you let me express myself in a comic versus having having just that set this is what you have to do this is what you do there's no if ands or buts about it um, I think that allowing students to have a choice in the way they learn really helps them comprehend the content and how they are supposed to behave or interact with social with society and just allowing them to be themselves and give them a choice in how they want to learn and advocate for themselves. Um, the best thing we can teach our students is to be an advocate advocator for themselves and others around them and be supportive in just keeping them so safe and stable and not allowing anything bad to happen. Um, keeping them safe in an environment that they feel comfortable talking to you about and having other issues that come about if they're making getting bullied or anything like that for their dyslexia, being able to show them what it's like to have someone to listen. Um, I think that in, days, in today's society, we don't pay attention enough to our students. And I think that we as teachers need to be the advocator and allow them to express themselves in many different ways, not just giving them a paper to write about and allowing errors. We we don't want we want them to make mistakes. We want them to learn from their mistakes. So spelling it out phonetically versus spelling it correctly, they mean the same thing. You just have to focus more, decode more, and be able to just relax and breathe. And even having the students read it out to you or their friends versus um, turning it in the way it is and there's so many spelling errors or they, it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense in their head and they can be able to explain to you as the teacher how they want to go about it. And I think that we just need to focus on our students and not how we were taught or how we learn, but focus on our students and the way that they learn and what would be best for them. And I think that that is the most important thing that we can do for our students in today's society. Thank you.